listening to Radio DJ. Hello guys, uh, I've been lucky enough to have this quick interview with Tori Amos during her Night of Hunters tour. How long has it been that you started? Um, it seems like a while, but I think it's only been a week and a half. Wow. How is it to be back in Italy? It's lovely. We love it. <laughs> love the people. It's been ma it's just magical playing shows here. Well, it's magic to have you here, really. So, Night of Hunters take the name after the album, right? The new album that's been released. It's the 20th, right? And it's been released here in Italy on the 20th of September. It's been released worldwide. Worldwide, on the 20th, yes. On the 20th of September. Worldwide. Yes. So tell us about it. We we're very curious about the whole idea. How did you how did you come up with this whole story? Well, Deutsche Grammophon approached me and said, "Would you compose a 21st century song cycle based on classical themes?" And so, you know, they're the mother of all classical labels yeah. and very prestigious. So. It's not as if you can go to them in Berlin and knock on their door and say, okay. you know, I they have came to you. They came to you. me. Wow. Yes, a German doctor of musicology, oh. Dr. Alexander Burr, and he found me on the road. It was it, over a year ago, and um, my first response was, if I'm going to do it, it's the variations on themes that is the challenge because when you start. Uh, doing variations on masters, Schubert, yeah. um, Schumann, then you really have to approach it, um, I've said, with a, a delicate ruthlessness. Okay. You know, you have to be delicate on one hand, but you also have to be ferocious because you can't be intimidated by it, but you have to be respectful. So it's a very, it's a balance. It's a balance, yeah, definitely, because it will overcome you, or you could overcome it. Yeah. You have to dance with it. Well, yeah, the amazing thing of the whole album is how you listen to songs and the chapters of a book. Hmm. It's a story, it, it, it's magical. When you get into the story, it really tells you, like, a whole thing from the beginning to the end, from dusk to, from dusk to dawn, right? It is very good. And another thing that I wanted to ask you is, how did you manage to hit the top 10 charts? Altogether, it's alternative rock and classical. How is it possible? It's like, you know, it's like two genres that you don't expect to mix, to mingle, but you had this amazing talent to do it. Well, you're very kind, but I've never done, I've never achieved that before. I've never achieved um, that. And so I guess I, I have to be honest with you, I wasn't thinking of accomplishing that. I was trying to really write the best narrative that I could. I studied the song cycle form, and it is different than a musical. I've been working on a musical with the British National Theatre. Yeah. And if I hadn't done that, honestly, I would have had no clue on how to, I mean, how you create this kind of sonic cathedral, because that's what it really is. Yeah. So after working for over five years on a musical with an incredible creative team, uh, the book writer Sam Adamson and Marianne Elliott, the director, and so many people on the musical, that I feel like I learned a lot of things that I was able then to apply to building a narrative. And a song cycle is not about speaking dialogue. It is about the story being woven through the instruments and through the characters who are singing. And you can have liner notes, and we felt photographs. In the past, there could be drawings. So it's that kind of medium. Um, but I really tried to just make a story that I felt people would relate to, a shattering of a relationship, but mystical characters coming in with Annabelle and the fire the fox, and, the goose, and, yes. yeah, all together. Well, thank you for this interview. Good luck with your show. Thank and I you. really can't wait to see you. Like, we're all very excited about it. And thank you. Best of luck. Thank you so much.